Good afternoon. We warmly welcome all to our historic Cathedral Basilica as we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent. All visitors and newcomers are urged to fill out our welcome envelope found in your pew. Please place your completed envelope in today's collection basket. God's holy word calls us to prepare the way of the Lord by repenting of our sins. Today's second collection is for the retirement fund for the religious. Please be generous in helping those who gave their lifetime for Christ and his church. As we prepare for today's celebration, all are urged to fully participate in Mass by singing from our hymnal. Kindly introduce yourself to the people seated around you, especially sharing your name with those you have never met. Please join in singing hymn number 338, the Advent Gathering Song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, good afternoon. We are here to thank God for all the graces and blessings that bestowed on us and to our family. We are now on the second Sunday of Advent. Our gospel for the day tells all of us to respond to the calling of St. John the Baptist, that is to have the metanoia, the change of heart, repentance, and conversion to the Lord. As we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent, we will now light the second candle. And today we have uh, actually have three families representing uh, we're lighting the candle. We have the uh, Chapman family, the Geyers, and the uh, Kemple families. And even though it's three different, three separate families, they're actually representing one family. They're representing all of us, the family of God. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no early undertaking hither those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom 
gain us admit us to his company who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen we shall now bless the families who lighted the candle i request all of you to please pray for these families. God, our Heavenly Father, we entrust to you these families as your servants. Be their guide. Be the source of light so that they can always walk in the right path that you would like them to tread. Bless them always and their families that will be faithful stewards as your disciples. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let's all be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Jerusalem, take off your robe of mourning and misery. Put on the splendor of glory from God forever. Wrapped in the cloak of justice from God, bear on your head the mitre that displays the glory of the eternal name. For God will show all the earth your splendor. You will be named by God forever the peace of justice, the glory of God's worship. Up, Jerusalem, stand upon the heights. Look to the east and see your children gathered from the east and the west at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that they are remembered by God. Led away on foot by their enemies, they left you but God will bring them back to you, born aloft in glory as on royal thrones. For God has commanded that every lofty mountain be made low, and that the age-old depths and gorges be filled to level ground, that Israel may advance secure in the glory of God. The forest and the every fragrant kind of tree have overshadowed Israel at God's command. For God is leading Israel in joy by the light of his glory, with his mercy and justice for companion. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I pray always with joy in my every prayer for all of you because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God is my witness how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value, so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and the praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Iteria and Trachonitis, and Licinius was tetrarch of Abilene. During the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah in the desert. John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one cried, crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding roads shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. It's good to have you here with us today. And as usual, we'd like to take just a moment to uh, welcome our visitors. So if you're visiting with us today, if you would, please uh, stand where you are so we may give you a warm welcome. I know we have more visitors than, than one, but uh, you're, maybe you're a little shy. I understand that. Uh, so we're glad that you're here with us today, and we hope that you come back and visit us again soon. And for our visitors um, at the entrance to the cathedral, we will have a, a gift for you. And then uh, at the end of Mass, uh, Father Ernie uh, will have a, a blessing for our visitors and also for those who are traveling this week. Prepare the way of the Lord. As we celebrate this second Sunday of Advent, we continue to prepare. To prepare ourselves spiritually to celebrate Christmas, the first coming of Jesus. This was when Almighty God, the King of the universe, humbled himself by becoming one of us in order that we might share in his divinity. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate what God has already done for us, we also look forward with hope to the second coming of Jesus when he comes in his glory. We prepare to celebrate what God has done for us and what God will do for us by preparing ourselves to receive him now, not in the past, not in the future, but now. Because he comes to us in many ways in our daily lives. You see, Jesus is already among us and dwells within us. He is Emmanuel, God with us. We all have to, all we have to do is just to open our hearts to receive the most amazing gift that God has given us, the gift of himself in Jesus. As we examine our lives in this time of preparation, we're reminded, reminded that he offers us the gift of his mercy. Because as we examine ourselves, we not only find the good things within us, but we also see some imperfections, the things that we need to work on. We're reminded that, that he, that Jesus Christ, is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. In the first reading today, we hear the great news of joy and excitement. God is doing great things for his people. His people have experienced sorrow and hardship. They were scattered and led away by the enemy, but now, because of Jesus, God's people have hope and joy. Jesus came to gather his people, and because of Jesus, when Jesus was born, we began, or we began a new and wonderful time, a wonderful time that we live in, part of salvation history that we live in. In today's gospel, we're reminded to prepare the way of the Lord. But, you see, we're simply asked, or we're simply being called, to respond to something that God has already done for us. He has already prepared and given us as a gift, the way to himself. Jesus says very, very clearly, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Through Jesus, God has commanded that every mountain be made low 
and that every valley be filled to, to level ground, preparing the way for us. So you see, Jesus, God has prepared the way for us. God gave us Jesus as the way, as the path to follow, so that we, his people, may secure or may, may advance secure in the glory of God as we hear in today's first reading. We're reminded to, in the gospel, we're reminded to remove any obstacle between us and God. Removing anything that separate us, separates us from God. What is it that separates us from God? Sinfulness. These valleys that we hear about, and the, and these mountains that we hear about, these winding roads and rough ways are our sins. St. John the Baptist proclaims a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. So we are called to conversion, to change our ways, to turn away from sin, and to turn to God's mercy, accepting the gift of Jesus, which he offers to all of us. To me, it's interesting, as I read the gospel, it's very interesting how the word of God came to John in the desert. The gospel starts by naming some uh, very powerful and probably wealthy individuals. Some political leaders, some religious leaders. I imagine a very busy, very hectic uh, place But the word of God came to John in the desert, away from all this, away from the people. The more I thought about it, the more it actually made sense. Because to me, a desert represents a place away from the noise of daily life. Not necessarily the, the noise that we hear with our ears, the noise that, that our spirit that bothers our spirit, that the noise that keeps our spirit from hearing God's voice. Sometimes we're so busy and so preoccupied and uh, that in our lives that we can't hear God speaking to us, that he's reaching out to us and helping, trying to help us to make changes in our lives. Let me give you an example. And my brother, uh, Deacon Frank, uh, who's here, will be able to understand exactly what I'm talking about. While in the diaconate program, we were required to attend a silent retreat every year. This was part of our discernment to see if God was truly calling us to be a deacon, to see if we were on the path, on the straight line that God had for us. The, the silent retreat began on a Thursday evening with a meal, which we were allowed to talk during the meal. After the meal, the silence was imposed. And the retreat ended on a Sunday around lunchtime. And that, at that point, we could speak again. In the meantime, the only time that we were able to, to speak verbally, to, to out loud, was during Mass, and when we prayed, did some, uh, prayed some, uh, some prayers together as a group. Other than that, it was silence. The first year that I attended this retreat, I had an interesting experience. Because I'm not much of a talker, but to spend all that time without talking and without hearing people's voices, I realized how much noise there is, how much, how many, how much uh, there is in the world that keep us from hearing God's voice. 
While I was walking around on, around the, the Holy Family Center outside in the, in the wooded area, I came to this uh, clear area where the wind was blowing. For the first time in many years, I noticed the whistling of the wind when it hit my ears. The wind blows here. The wind blows everywhere, and I'm sure it's whistled, my, uh, made that whistling noise in my ears before, but I had never noticed it because I was so occupied with other things that I'd never spent time alone just to listen to God, to get, listen to, to what He has to say to me. During this retreat, in which we were called to examine ourselves. I asked God to tell me. I said, tell me. Tell me what it is that I need to do to know that I am on the path that you have chosen for me. You see, I visualize this for everyone. I visualize God, then I visualize each one of us. Me, for example, there's a straight line from God to me. That straight line leads me directly to God, to eternal life with God. And that line exists for each one of us. Today, as I was talking to Mr. Charlie Balsam, one of our presenters at our convocation for our parish, I was having a, a conversation with him and he mentioned something that, that really hit me. He said, and, and he did, has no idea that I was gonna talk about this. He said, God draws, God draws straight with crooked lines. God draws straight with crooked lines. And I asked him to kind of clarify that, just to make sure I was understanding. And he said exactly what I was thinking. God has this straight line, but for us, as human beings, we go back and forth, crossing that line, going back and forth, at times, we don't see the line anymore. We're lost. At other times, we don't even know that the line exists. But God continues to call us to be on that line. So that weekend, I felt God saying to me, work on removing obstacles. Anything that separates you from me. Anything that instead of bringing me closer to, instead of bringing me closer to God, it actually is pushing us apart. Remove those obstacles. That doesn't mean just, just what I call major sins, you know. Uh, I'm talking about everyday things. Everyday things like, uh, in my case, worrying, anxiety, not trusting God, maybe not being so very patient with, uh, with uh, my family or with others, maybe not being very patient when someone cuts me off and, uh, as I'm driving. Simple things like that. God said, those are obstacles. Those are things that separate us. So as we prepare ourselves spiritually to celebrate Christmas, it's important to spend time with God in prayer and in examination of conscience, in examining ourselves. 
listening to God's voice as he helps us to make straight his paths. Listening to God's voice as he helps us to fill every valley and, and make every mountain low. The Bible tells us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. There is no mountain that is too high for him. There is no valley that is too low for him. With God's help, we can get rid of all those obstacles and continue on the line that God has for us. But, because God gave us free will, he doesn't force himself on us. It requires an action from us. It requires us to do something in response to what he has already done for us. As Christmas gets closer, we hear the voice of St. John the Baptist and we respond. We respond to his appeal for conversion. We open our hearts to receive Jesus in our daily lives and we ourselves announce the coming of our Lord by the way that we live our lives. By examining ourselves, we were able to do what St. Paul tells us in the second reading. St. Paul says that, that we discern what is of value so that we may be pure and blameless for the days of Christ. So we look within ourselves to see what should remain, what should be removed, what should be changed. The gospel says this, prepare the way of the Lord and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. As we prepare, we shall see the salvation of God who is Jesus Christ. Amen. we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the rest of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy, come. Come quickly, For our church and for world peace, for the unity of Christians, 
for non-mass intentions, and for all God's people. Lift up, O oh Church, this world to God. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy come. For struggling families, the sick, suffering, poor, elderly, and unemployed, for the reverence of human life and the defense of religious liberty, we pray. Lift up, O oh Church, this world to God. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy come. For vocations and true biblical stewardship, for all who have died, especially Betty Kubala, and for all those who grieve, we pray. Lift up, O oh Church, this world to God. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy come. For travelers, for those being baptized, and for the intentions in our hearts, Church, this world to God. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy, come. God, our Heavenly Father, we present to you our prayers, and this we ask through Christ our Lord. We now invite our children to bring their gifts for Jesus and place them in the basket at the foot of the altar. Also, please join in singing our offertory song number 373, Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming.
pray, my brothers and my sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for He assumed at His first coming the loneliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest we who watch for that day may inherit the greater promise in which now we dare to hope and so with angels and archangels with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the true fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entering into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Say this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new one eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of His death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Curtis our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Betty Kubala, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the land of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, with St. Anthony of Padua, with St. Raphael, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever, whatever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins and on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. We believe that the most blessed sacrament of the altar is the true and full presence of Jesus Christ, his body, blood, soul, and divinity. As Catholics who are in the state of grace come to Holy Communion, those of other faiths are also invited to approach the altar with hands over their hearts and pray with the priest for the unity of all God's people. Please join in our Eucharistic hymn, Behold the Lamb, which can be found on page number 824.
Let us pray. Replenish by the food of spiritual nourishment. We humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Children who wish to participate in the children's procession at our 3 p.m. Christmas Eve Mass are asked to sign up after Mass today at our baptismal font. 
Our Christmas decorating will be Thursday, December the 20th from 4.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. Please sign up at the baptismal font after Mass if you wish to help decorate. Our Cathedral Basilica School will have raffle tickets available after Mass for a 2019 Chevy Cruze for a donation of $5 each or five for $20. The drawing will be at their annual Mardi Gras Gala on March the 2nd. Kindly pick up on our plaza the memorial crosses you ordered in memory of your deceased loved ones. Our giving tree gifts are due by next Sunday. You may bring your wrapped gifts to our parish office by Friday this week or to Mass next weekend. And before leaving, if you'll kindly tidy up your pews for our next Mass. Thank you. May I request all those who are going to travel this week to please stand up so that we can pray for you. God, our Heavenly Father, we entrust to you our brothers and sisters who are going to travel this week. Be their protector and their guide so that they may arrive at their destination in safety and in joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you and your family the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. See you.